When we talk flooding issues here in the city, it is typically as a result of heavy rains that last a long time that back up our our sewer our sewer system, excuse me, and then that causes the water in the roads. We've got Jim Stratman in Nulu for us right now with a look at uh, how the rain is impacting the morning so far, Jim. Yeah, Eric, we're not seeing those flooding concerns as of right now, but that's because the rain is still fairly fresh and we're not seeing those heavy, heavy downpours that we're almost used to at this point when we get a big storm that comes through here. It is a very steady rain. It is not what I would call a strong rain, though, but you can see the wind is starting to blow through these trees and we told you in the last hour that the wind had seriously picked up since the time that we got down here to Nulu around 430 this morning. I would say the rain has picked up as well, but one thing to be sure of, it has been consistent and steady, and that is the thing that we're going to be watching over the next several days is whether or not this steady, consistent rain could cause some of those issues, as you mentioned, when it starts to back up into the sewer system. But for right now, take a look at the roads. I mean, they are wet. There is a little bit of ponding in certain areas. Depending on where you are, you may see more of that, but this is not that bad as of right now. Again, it's the consistency over the next couple of days that could start to cause issues and something that we will definitely be keeping an eye on. Eric? You're right. You are laying the foundation for a long day, Jim. We're expecting the heavier rains to arrive in this area closer to the noon hour. We will tell you that right now there are over 1.2 million people in Florida without power. You're looking at Marine deputies in Fort Myers Beach prepping to rescue residents last night as Celine began to move through. You can tell the winds are whipping the water around as that rescue team tries to move through more than uh, a foot of water that was already on the roadway at that point. ABC's Rena Roy now from Tampa. Overnight, Hurricane Helene slamming Florida, roaring ashore south of Tallahassee as a Category 4 storm. You have these 140 mile an hour winds hitting here in North Florida. Uh, this is going to extend. I mean, you're going to have hurricane force winds that are going to extend across a couple counties to the east and west. The National Weather Service issuing a rare extreme wind warning for the Tallahassee area, calling Hurricane Helene an extremely dangerous and life-threatening situation, warning people to take cover and to treat the conditions as if a tornado was approaching. This is shaping up to be a catastrophic hurricane for Florida's Big Bend. Here in Tallahassee, the rain, it has been consistent for hours now, and the winds are starting to intensify. In Fort Myers Beach, Marine deputies wading through floodwaters, pushing a boat to help rescue people. In Tampa, roads turned to rivers. The area hit with strong bands of wind and rain. This video appearing to show transformers exploding. This storm is raging. I have got flooding so bad you can't even imagine. Near St. Petersburg, the lobby of the All Seasons Hotel underwater. On nearby Interstate 4, a highway sign fell onto a vehicle, killing the driver. Hundreds of people in Taylor County, Florida, in the bullseye of the storm, told emergency officials they did not evacuate. The sheriff's office now asking residents who defied the mandatory evacuation order to write their name, birthday, and important information on your arm or leg in a permanent marker so they can be identified. Helene is now setting its sights on Georgia, but it is expected to continue weakening over the next several hours. Rena Roy, ABC News, Tampa, Florida. And as a result of today's weather threats, there will be no school today for JCPS and Archdiocese schools. JCPS says it's just like a traditional snow day, so that means no online classes. And all Friday night JCPS football games that were not played yesterday are now canceled. Shelby County and Eminence Independent Schools are also closed. UofL classes and offices are closed. Bellarmine has canceled in-person classes. In Southern Indiana, New Albany, Floyd County schools are closed today. Greater Clark County, Silver Creek, and Borden Henryville schools have all moved to e-learning. That's a lot of information. We also have it scrolling at the bottom of your screen there, and we've got a list of closings for you at the WHAS 11 on the homepage there. Louder than life, day two is still a go despite impending weather. Here's a look at day one yesterday, which was a bit gloomy, but it was pretty much dry. And with today's forecast, expecting lots of rain and some really strong winds, festival organizers and Metro Emergency Services say downloading that Louder Than Life app could help keep you safe in the event of severe weather. 
pay attention to the communications from the producer because there may be things that change throughout the day. Um, know what the weather, uh, what the warning signs are going to be. It's all on the app. You know, know what when they when they tell you to do something. Know where if there's a potential evacuation. Know where to go. Know what to do. Louder Than Life says Freedom Hall will be used as a shelter if the weather turns into something more than rain and guests can also shelter in their cars. And of course, we'll be keeping you updated on any severe weather this weekend on the WHS 11 app. You can scan the QR code on your screen now and download it wherever you get your apps. 608 now and the first medical marijuana business licenses license has officially been awarded in Kentucky. Governor Andy Bashir says he is giving that honor to a laboratory. KCA Labs in Nicholasville will be tasked with testing products before they're offered to patients. Bashir called it another step toward ensuring Kentuckians have access to safe products when the medical marijuana program officially launches in 2025. I love that the first license is going to an entity that, that helps us do this safely. Our Office of Medical Cannabis has established strict regulations and the safety compliance facilities like KCA will guarantee all Kentucky cannabis is held to the highest medical standards. Kentucky will use a lottery system to award initial licenses and businesses uh, to businesses wanting to sell, process or grow medical marijuana. That lottery will be held on October 28th.